Hi everybody, Madge Live here, we're the Vasquez family, I am one of the five. Um, today we are in a rush because we're running late, like usual, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to be reacting to part two of The Chosen, season four, because they're showing it in theaters and it was a wild ride, so here we go. Alright, so as we make our way to the movie theaters, Dad, do you want to share with us um, what our thoughts were? kind of recap what we were thinking of the first part because that kind of left us in a yeah. very very um, frozen state yeah. of emotion yes kind it of. did yes it did um well first of all so happy to have you join us again for all of what we're doing oh look our neighbors are right there our neighbors are uh, a little surprise cool love <laughs> yeah, that the best neighbors. <laughs> so you've got our neighbors you've got us you're coming to the movies with us congratulations uh, look we're just gonna recap really quick episodes one through three were uh very beautiful <laughs> heartbreaking uh, we've we've kind of heard a little bit already we're watching it so this is saturday after the thursday that they've come out so we've heard, we've heard a little bit of hubbub that it's it's even more emotional how's that even possible I like how, how are we supposed to okay that's us we're getting ready to go mama's riding and she's driving really um she's driving really good because if i was driving i'd probably be stressing everybody out there's a reason why i'm on this side of the car <laughs> okay. josh <laughs> yes what do you think uh i honestly don't know where the story could be going what moments will happen next mm -hmm. so i think i'm very curious to see what will happen how it will affect the characters um it's it's truly such a journey and to be able to continue it is i'm just really looking forward to it and the music the um the production design and the interactions between the characters uh it's it's all so so fascinating and so so emotional and, and and truly gravitating and it's it's uh it's definitely something to look forward to so mm -hmm. i think that i am excited i'm nervous i am looking forward to it yeah um yeah i love how you know this whole concept of what the chosen is of telling the story of the bible and jesus and his disciples um it's something we're all very like you know us as christians or catholics um we're very familiar with it um, but even then, there can be unexpected twists, and it's still unknown of how they're organizing it, like chronologically, how they're all piecing it together. So I think that's where the anticipation comes from. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to how they continue to do it because they've been doing it so masterfully. Um, so yeah, I can't wait. I don't know if I'm gonna cry again. This, this <laughs> showing, but honestly, after, after last, after last screening of part one um i'm i'm ready for anything <laughs> so yeah it should be fun yeah yeah we're good okay all right well then we just got back so um we're gonna talk about it it's uh, a lot to process through but here we go we're gonna bring you guys along with us Yeah, it's supposed All to be right. Cool. So, Hello? Yeah, so Matthew's there. He's gonna help us um, <laughs> see everyone when they're talking. Um, you see? Hi. Look how cool that is. I don't think we've ever done that before. Yeah, Check it out. Jemmy. Hello. Me. And mom and dad. And then, of course, there's not an angle for Matthew, but that, you know. We'll get Matthew. It's just here. kind of a, Well, yeah, we'll, I'll yeah, trade out we'll, with him. We'll get him. So, where right. do we begin? Well, yes. First of all, I, I was telling mom upstairs as we were finishing making the chai teas This is the most important TV show of our time. I mean, it's a very strong feeling. It's a very strong opinion mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a subjective outlook on this show. Um, there's a lot to unpack no doubt more than More than a regular TV show or movie than we've ever watched and yet it felt so cinematic I mean, how would we even begin to describe what we just watched? Well, I think I would comment because I never got to say this it's the most important show because we're able to experience it in a theatrical level as well. I don't know why the, the gravity, like the weight of it, yeah. is felt by being able to experience it on that scale. On the scale that we've experienced movies and superhero movies and, you know, tragic films and stories and all these different walks of, of, of stories in cinema. Mm -hmm. um, it's It's led to this very intimate, this very... Um, spiritual story about Jesus and his followers and um, 
and it's something that we've only witnessed, of course, through the movies that have come out before, um, which are equally as impactful, mm -hmm. but... To see it so flushed out. To see it so flushed out it's with so... so much time and attention to the characters and to the mm -hmm. details. Um, it truly is so special. We all know where the story is going. This is like the greatest love story of all time. And we know how it ends. Um, but to see the little pieces build up to what we know is mm -hmm. coming just makes every moment more precious because we know where it's going. And we also know how hard it is going to be as we go along to see it go where it's going. Ultimately to, you know, the resurrection, which is the joy of our faith and the hope that we all have. So going into visual spectacle, um, what Joshua said is true. I think the seeing it in this size really emphasizes the beauty of what they've created. Mm -hmm. Every frame is artwork. This, mm -hmm. this, um, this goal to, to make um, stories be told not just through the dialogue or through the sounds, but through what you see. The visual, yeah. yeah. And so... They did that really beautifully, especially in, the, in these um, three episodes, especially the first one. Mm -hmm. um, how they bring you through that journey after what happened after the part one. So it's just so well done. There's a lot of visual foreshadowings that they emphasized on of what we all know is coming. But just to see like that painful, slow progression to what is coming, it's just heart-wrenching. And you can just feel it visually. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that they're able to do that is just, you know, it, they can hit you in those emotions visually, um, with the sounds, with obviously the acting, and the story, of course. Well, so, I yeah. also think it, it, you see certain details, certain interactions that you don't think about. I mean, seeing characters cut honey and put it on bread or like decorate these different dishes and you know go outside to use the bathroom or go on dates or all these different <laughs> things that we do today it's it mm. makes it very very tangible very close and that's why i think that it's it's very different than any art form we've seen before um of course it's been done before but to see it today in this in, unique way yeah definitely agree with the humanity of these characters that we we know mm -hmm. and we that we read about and to see them you really start to connect with that humanity um, because you hear about all their stories all the time but to be I mean there's so much heart in every scene mm. like those they just bring their mm. hearts and souls to these roles yeah if you can give us a brief summary of what we experienced with these three without getting into the spoiler territory the stories people would know or, oh that's a good you know uh, the Mary and Martha story very very powerful way of, of depicting it I, I I had never experienced it before to that degree it's very intimately told very intricately told um, so Mary and Martha um, then you have the, the different moments where Christ is you know preaching in in public um, you know I, I have we've seen different renditions of Jesus and you know they they all respectively all the actors that have played him um, respectively, the ones I've seen, I should say, so from Jesus of Nazareth, um, and then the Jim Caviezel and the Passion. Um, you know, you have these very iconic ways of, of, of playing Jesus, but jo Jonathan Rumi's ability to, to, especially in the moments of the sermons, or when he's speaking to his his disciples, is so biblical, and so, like, I, I, I almost can hear the gospel on a Sunday. <laughs> it's depicted in a way that it just feels so real and so human. And probably the biggest one that I would talk about, which we can really unpack uh, as a spoiler, is so in our in our Catholic faith, right before the most important uh, part of our Mass, one of the prayers that we do, you need only say the word, and my my servant shall be healed. And it's that whole the whole sense that I am not worthy, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to enter into my home, um, but just say the word. Am I so that whole phrase is a very big part of our celebration on Sundays, and it comes from a very very pinnacle historical moment in in the time of Jesus Christ Jesus of Nazareth and it, it was the first moment that broke me and then on top of that the miracles like Jesus right. um, performed miracles and um, the way that was portrayed was beautiful because it's just kind of they mm -hmm. have this amazing music that kind of Guide us. I don't know yeah. what instrument it is that just holds the note holds it holds it holds it holds it and then they, there's like a beat and then it like 
Yeah. <laughs> just like you I'm sorry, that's kind don't, of a, don't, but don't it's worry. it's the way that the you just feel that tension and you feel that yeah. that emotion. You're just holding it. Well, holding that's the it, sound that they it. left us with at the end of um, the first three episodes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So then the music was. It's the amazing. ring of of grief, of loss, of yes, of uh, a, a tension of what 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 am I supposed to do? It's the sound of grief. Mm -hmm. This 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 sound, this pitching sound. That's like when is it going to end? When is it going to stop ringing? It's very very thought out and yeah mm -hmm. I mean music you don't even have to spoil anything with music hmm. it was so prominent in these episodes to show mm -hmm. a passing of time yep. to show traveling purpose mission there was a lot more of a driving force to these these episodes we saw I feel this was the first time music for me felt like a narrator mm -hmm. yeah it felt like a soul that was guiding us especially in this show yeah yeah so yeah. that's a, that's my biggest thing with music should we jump into spoilers and maybe Matthew, you can break yes. us into these. Yeah, um, sure. We can switch sides here. Well, or we can even seats. jump into spoilers on a more softer note because the <laughs> disciples play music and they sing yeah. and they have fun. <laughs> that is a big. They arm like, wrestle. Like, they arm wrestle. The girls arm wrestle. <laughs> yeah, like was that awful. was so special. Yeah. I, I to <sighs> see them play me to hear their voices. <laughs> not just... perfect, but still, like that was so awesome. You see them so alive and even do things us as you know as gatherings as communities do um to celebrate and to worship and you know play games and have fun it's it was so so great like just when i thought that they were already so relatable they just become even more and more relatable um which is one of the most beautiful and powerful and convicting things about especially these three episodes we watched yeah um which we can get into later, but right. <laughs> yeah. All right, hey guys. Bless uh, you. So yeah, a great, great viewing today. Um, really great, really great experience today. Um, it's just enhancing and elevating everything we experienced in episodes one through three. Yeah. I said it in our last review, and it continues in this one. This idea and theme that Jesus is starting to become very frustrated with the fact that. Um, you know, his disciples, his followers aren't, they aren't getting it. They aren't fully understanding what he's there to do, what he's come to do. And so you see that frustration, I think, in these episodes kind of come to this climactic moment, um, which is so great, I think. To the point about music and different things being a narration, when we saw the miracles this time around, there was no audio because we've already seen that. The show's already highlighted that moment, you know. Um, of course, it'd be great to see it again, but we're now truly being almost taken in and out of these moments that we know from scripture. And I think it's important to also remember that this show is not, like it's always great to go back to the real thing, to the Bible, to the, to the scripture, to the word. But this is just, again, in my opinion, another way to meditate and reflect on what you read. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different way to look at the angles and the, the context as to what's going on. And so that's what a lot of this is. A lot of what we've seen in this season so far is not too explicitly touched on. You know, you kind of go from the miracles and these different moments, you slowly get to Jerusalem and then obviously the rest of the story that we know, which we'll get into. So they've really taken this time to step step into characters. Obviously we see, we're in spoiler territory, so I'm gonna jump into it. But we see Thomas grieve, um, obviously immediately after losing Rayma. And we see how his friends have to comfort him. Um, and again, to the performances, I mean, the guy who plays Thomas is just sensational. I mean, they all are, but he really, did shine in terms of that helplessness and just yeah it's it's interesting because they kind of playing on a similar theme that you see with peter and eden when they lost when they had the miscarriage you know the whole question of why did god allow this to happen why did this happen um why didn't he do something why didn't he step in um and thomas is asking a similar question but it is different it's slightly different and so you actually see that in a scene where peter is constantly trying to comfort thomas and it really kind of builds up to this scene when they're in the marketplace looking for, for materials and things. So again, I think the biggest thing that ha was happening in these episodes is just Jesus having to um, obviously confront the Pharisees and, and you know, um, the priests and then as well as, you know, his own followers and trying to like shake them up and wake them up. Um, and it's only his mother that can really console him and then, you know, remind him because there is that sense of two natures in him. Uh, you know, human and, and divine. And so I think what we see a lot in these last episodes is his divinity kind of being frustrated with 
with humanity. With humanity, yeah. yeah. And so, but how does he, again, truly, like my mom was saying earlier, the greatest love story ever told, how does he eventually lay down his life? And he mentions it, he keeps saying it. And I love how they, they really showed us that the disciples were genuinely confused. And it makes sense, because there's a lot of things. I mean, they've, been, they've lived their whole lives expecting one thing, being taught one thing. And Jesus is truly coming in and shaking it up. So, yeah. Um, yeah and they had to experience some hard things in this in these episodes. Um, when they had to help the Roman soldiers carry their stuff. You know, they had to really start to show a lot of humility. And mm. put themselves in situations where they're really having to learn what Jesus is all about. Like, mm -hmm. it's not this prestigious life to be following our teacher, the Savior, and the Messiah. But what it really entails to do that and what the sacrifice is when you're a follower mm -hmm. of Christ, that it's not meant to be, you know, everything happy all the time and everyone that we love gets, you know, comes back from the dead and nobody dies or gets hurt. Like, you know, it's, he's truly helping to reveal these hard, um, this hard calling, which is to follow him, mm -hmm. the, what it takes to follow him. Yeah. And I think we were really like that was magnified in these three episodes. Yeah. And also the the faith, you know, that even though you're not one of the disciples, um, other people were demonstrating more faith, like the centurion, um, more mm -hmm. faith than even the disciples were and mm -hmm. more more belief in what what Jesus is about. So right. I think they're having to like really experience hard things to, to get it. Yeah. And I think even then, they're not really getting it yet. Well, it's, it's but, just so fascinating. It's because I feel like you really see... I think it's probably easier for, for the centurion to kind of get a grip on it. Because I feel like what's so hard for the Pharisees to understand, and even his own followers, is again, they've grown up with this understanding, or they for so long have almost controlled and started to make the law their own in a sense. And it's hard for them to see beyond that. It's hard for them to see, and, you know, there's this emphasis in the episodes about your own understanding and then God's understanding. You know, there's a scene with John and Judas and, you know, Judas, I love the way that they're depicting Judas, by the way. They're really kind of giving us some insight um, as to how his ambition is truly going to lead him to, um, you know, without, without fully knowing into this path of, of betraying, betraying Jesus. And so yeah. the way that they're, they're not just antagonizing him, you, you truly understand and it's, it's still not going to be heartbreaking, but... Um. Yeah. There's a lot of, con not controversy, but different thoughts and ideas behind the motives of Judas. And, you know, Judas, you know, he was... Just uh, different things being said. I don't want to divulge into all of them right now. But they're choosing to give us a backstory to Judas that maybe will help us get this interpretation of Judas and this story. Because there's so many holes mm -hmm. in Judas's um, story. But also, you know a lot of different characters like the whole Rayma thing like Thomas is a character as well that's very misunderstood there's a lot of different thoughts behind right. Thomas's motives so mm -hmm. the creators of this show went ahead and made their own plot I guess to help the story kind right. of flow better mm -hmm. um, yes. even the some of the uh, priests the high priests you know there was characters in there obviously that you don't read about it in the Bible. You just kind of, you know about them, well, but even then, it's, they humanize them because it's very easy in the Bible to read it and be like, oh, all the you know all the Jewish people and the Pharisees are bad guys, and that's not the case at all. I mean, you watch it, and even as a performer, if you're an actor, like you sit in them and you you believe what you're doing is right, and you feel that from all of everyone that's in the court and in the council, all of them believe they're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. um, you know. And so it's it's very fascinating to watch all of that come come together and. Yeah. I will say, I'll ask you guys next what your favorite episode was. I think the last one was my favorite for me. Um, the way that they were able to, it was Hanukkah, right? That they were showing us through the different days. I love that. Um, I think you really get to see that Jesus was, you know, Jewish. And the way that they were able to just, actually, it's such a beautiful, um, such beautiful like traditions and ways of, of saying the prayers together and, and what they've done. Um, I just loved all of that. To see, to see all of them celebrate, you know, Hanukkah together. And the way that the 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 event of Hanukkah was a great vehicle um narratively to get through a, a week or through a certain amount of days and how we see one moment at the beginning of the episode that eventually leads us to the end of it so um yeah it was just so so great because you in a sense you can't forget that he was Jewish because 
that's part of who he was, you know, and in order to understand, I think to, to have a deeper and more intimate um, relationship with Jesus, with Christ, you kind of have to, you know, take that into consideration too. What was his everyday life? What did his prayer life look like? And so to again, see that, to see how he prayed and worshiped along his friends, is just something that we, we don't really get to see or really, again, um, contemplate on so that was really cool but yeah what episode did you guys well I think, think? To, to comment on what you were saying bro with episode 6 which I really found myself enjoying that one as well of course enjoy is a very probably a far off word because there's a lot more to it than just enjoying it <laughs> um, it's not like eating ice cream or something it's, <laughs> it's a lot more it's a lot more d deep than that um, yeah. but I think it also mirrors the celebration right this feast this this um, this period of time of celebration of reflection and and storytelling and they they reflect back but very much like after the event of hanukkah that original story from like you know what they described to us through that very very fun storytelling that they do with the the, the disciples the play um, the role play yeah the role playing <laughs> of the different characters and that was really, and we all learned what, what, you know, the, the origin of that, that holiday is. But after that, that event, after that blessing, there was darkness that followed. And very similarly in the episode, where is, there's that happiness, that, that, that joy of, of celebrating the holiday, the reality of the world sits in. You know, you can't just be inside the, the room, the candles are blown out. The, the, the place is filled with darkness once again. And it's just, it's something that is very true to a lot of the things today. That, you know, the, the reality of humanity still looms very, very strongly. And, and our, our need to stay strong and they just, they, they need to stay strong. It's very, very difficult um, what was going on. And, and for, for Jesus to have to take all that in and, for the disciples to be so lost, reasonably so, a lot of thoughts, a lot of g confliction, and a lot of just confusion. It, confusion, right? yeah, oh, so man. so confusing, mm -hmm. and you can't blame them. You can't be like, oh, you guys are wrong. Like you guys don't have the. Well, of course, right? Twenty centuries later, twenty-one centuries later, <laughs> it's a long time, and a lot of a lot of thought and 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 research and and just you know a lot of things that happen even close to that story. Um, that make things more clear, but to them it's reasonably very, very blurry, very vague. Um, but yeah, no, it makes it more understandable for people and kind of puts a mirror on yourself where you realize if you're like certain characters. I definitely felt that like about Judas, like his frustration of wanting to serve and wanting to understand, but he keeps allowing his ambitions that he's kind of unintentionally idolized in a way not idolized but I maybe yeah idolized mm -hmm. in a way where it's blocking him from fully understanding what Jesus is trying to teach yeah. um, so it's just it's heart-wrenching just to see him like constantly trying and trying and it's it's just I can already just sense the pain that's already gonna come <laughs> um, so it's and he's made to feel alone yeah. by the snake that is his friend mm -hmm. that he had in his life before following Jesus. Mm -hmm. That scene where he's talking to him, the camera actually tilts slightly. Ooh. I, I didn't notice that, but it was very much like, very snake-like hmm. with um, this kind of, there was uh, these questions, all these questions as opposed to just things to reflect on. And, you know, the, the way that Jesus speaks, a very mm -hmm. kind and loving voice. It's all of these doubts, all of these fears, all of these, you know, these assumptions that are very negative. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very clear that he, it feels very isolated from the group, very separated. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, Jim, to see that develop is really heart wrenching, mm -hmm. especially yeah. because of how, how caring I would say that he is to like, to help, but mm -hmm. it's his passion to help that it's very much like a Martha where he's running around mm -hmm. to try to do whatever he can. And especially because it involves, you know, the financial side of things, the money, and that's mm -hmm. often tends to be a lot of, you know, division. Mm -hmm. um, it sprouts from. It's also from very fear-driven too, of you know wanting to overcome obstacles, and you know this whole financial debt or wanting to fund the ministry to make sure it lasts for a long time. Like, that's already so much fear and worry 
in that whole statement, it's like, where's the trust? Where's the mm. trust in Jesus? And that's what you see in the other in the other followers. They're following him like, no, we don't have a permanent home, but we know that with him we'll be safe. And one way or another, that's, you know, they know that and they believe that. But I feel like with Judas, he's struggling to, to see that, that God will always provide for them. And I think he always feels like, well, we always have to, you know, get some money. Like he always, he feels like he's the one who has to provide for everyone. And it's like, you can't play God, buddy. <laughs> but yeah. I feel like we tend to do that a lot in our own lives, too. So, yeah, it's very humbling. And the actor who, who plays Judas did is doing fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's, but, it's yeah. Just, it's such a... What's mom going to say? She was going to say Well, that. no, I was going to just agree with that, that I think um, him trying to be self-sufficient and trying to, you know, have that financial stability... And not fully trusting in God, I think, is his demise in the end. Mm. Um, you know, that he's so afraid. He's so afraid of per, like being ready for the future that mm. he misses what's right in front of him. Mm. For me, my favorite episode was episode four mm. with the centurion. Um, that moment, I don't know, those lines that he says really so I mean, hit my hey, guys? soul. Guys? Um, yes, guys. Oh, okay. Oh. What's his name? Um, guys, his praetor role, praetor. Yeah, praetor. that's what it was. Became yeah. praetor. Yeah. Praetor. Um, yeah, that was my favorite uh, episode from these three. I think mine uh, was for sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that mine was. Um, I would say my favorite was five. I think that's the one where he talks with Mary. Jesus talks with Mary. Mm -hmm. It's the Mary and Martha story. Mm -hmm. Like just all of that. I that think was really, beautiful. Really hit me. I think I tend to find myself in the limbo state of how Mary and Martha are. Um, so that's, that story, that part in the Bible has always fascinated me and it's always resonated with me. So to see them actually portray it and see it, cause I don't, I feel like we've never really seen an interpretation of that part in the Bible, like actually put in a filmic TV form. <laughs> so it was really beautiful to see. And I love the actress who plays Mary. She's, she's wonderful. Um, so just a lot of the themes and it's the building up to, it's, you know, you see Jesus struggling and the disciples struggling to understand. It's just, yeah, it's, it's that in between where it's, it's before it starts to just get even more intense. <laughs> yeah. It's to back to what you're saying about your favorite episode being episode four. I think one thing I did love in episode four, the way that Jesus was tempted with just losing, I don't want to say, I don't know if losing faith is the right way to say it, but yeah, he was starting to get frustrated and kind of defeated with the fact that they just weren't getting it, right, his followers. And at the end, when he's, when he's emotional and he's heartbroken, right, and then he's seeing um, Zebedee, um, Mary, and um, is it Tamar? When they're all pressing the oil, right, and he's having these flashes that you know are foreshadowing to his crucifixion, he knows what's coming, right? And it's in that moment of... of you know, obviously fear and, and sadness, and again, being heartbroken, Gaius again, kind of comes and literally hugs him, literally embraces him, but also represents and gives him that hope of, okay, yes, th this is, you're, 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 the per you're the person that I'm fighting for, that I am laying down my life for. You're the kind of person that I'm laying my life, my, my life down for. Um, you know, it's not just just people, but the, gen the Gentiles as well, and every, you know, the whole world. And so, Gaius, I think, represents that, that even when even his closest friends don't seem to be getting it, you know, Gaius is a reminder to Jesus that they are out there. There is still hope. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, that is what I, I, I do love. And even him in that moment, not only give it, did he give it foreshadowing to the crucifixion, but also to the Garden of Gethsemane as well, when he's just in despair and then he has to find a way to, to rise and, you know, and take it. But that um, just reminds really me of that, that moment where they go the extra mile actually two miles mm. that that whole moment where jesus keeps going it you know it puts them on equal ground that they start sharing um start sharing their 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 luggage instead of them like laying all their weight and all of the things that they were carrying the roman soldiers um they started to help them carry it because they were taken back by the fact that it wasn't like after them being obligated to carry it they kept carrying it. They kept going, and that's that's something that really struck me. That I I I I was very impacted by. Um, it just it it truly was so so special, and um, 
just the fact that you know Jesus would would do that for for them and and I don't I, you know there's there's no indication of that happening in the Bible but it's 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 one of those things where it develops the characters it adds to the disciples confusion one right but two it's also this clarity of what they're called to do what their mission is and so it's a very pivotal detail to also remind us that these soldiers are people they're human it's also when you have the historical context of what people would have experienced back then when they were on the road when they were journeying if you were to run into roman soldiers and because the law says they can take your stuff from out what would happen if jesus and his and his and his group were to run into that well how would they react and so that's i think what we're seeing is like the the what if the what ifs but also what they could have very likely have gone through things that were very unlikely or that were very unlikely to not have happened you know um especially during that time that's what i that's what I love, um, is that it, it is staying true to that and kind of giving us, kind of making us scratch our head in the sense of, oh, wow, yeah, I guess I never really thought about that, about, again, the, the historical context of what that must have, that, yeah. what, what it must have meant. So anyway, um, I think I'll swap with my dad now so he can come in and say his favorite episode and kind of give a little, also snippet as to what we all appreciated very much about episode five and mm -hmm. why. Um, so yeah, he'll jump in and, and kind of fill him, himself and kind of give his thoughts on spoilers and then we'll close this thing up. So my favorite episode was episode five. I mean, and here's why. I mean, because uh, don't get me wrong, I it's hard to just choose. But I, I had to, I had, I was assisted by my favorite scene in the whole three uh, episodes, which is the scene where Mary, Mother Mary, is washing Jesus's hair. Mm -hmm. So that that it very much connects to the very similar reaction I had to the passion of Christ when Jesus is showing his mom his idea for a new kind of table for people to eat at and sit at. Um, it's just such a human moment, but not just human in the general sense. It's their, their affection toward each other, their connection. Um, and, and to have a similar but even more powerful moment, um, I would say more powerful in this, in this case, because of Mary's role to be the one to ease Jesus and to remind him um, that there is great hope in, in humanity, although us humans are <laughs> we're a hard shell. And you know, I think, I know, I know, because I, I felt it, the, the interaction as she's cleaning out his hair and you could see how she sees him still as her little boy, but there he is, the savior of the world, the king of the universe. So it is, it's such a paradox moment. Yes, it's a fictional moment. I can hear people out there, yeah, but it's not biblical. And oh, I get that, but we can all, who do believe that Jesus existed, uh, he had a mom, and I'm sure he had moments with his mom like this. We can imagine that. It's not far-fetched to imagine his mother washing his hair and comforting him, encouraging him, opening his eyes, giving him some wisdom. Mm -hmm. And they even mentioned Joseph. Oh, man, they, they mentioned Joseph, who's transformed my life. And to hear, hear Jesus speak about his Abba on earth with so much affection, you know, it's, it's a new kind of gospel for me. It's, it's, it's written by humans who are out to just share the good news of hope, uh, the connection of family. And that moment, that scene for me was hmm. pinnacle. Pinnacle, because it gave Jesus that, that next thrust of energy to proceed and, and to go into the city that is Jerusalem. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful for this show. I said it at the beginning. Uh, why do I dare say something like the most important show of our time? Because it's based on the most important book of creation of humankind and we're getting to we're having a chance we're being invited to experience a dimension of it so that we will then revisit those pages um, and hopefully changed a changed people a more curious people as to who jesus and who god is our creator is um and what kind of people we can be potentially the last thing i will talk about is the phenomenal job i don't even know how to put it to words it just feels so relatable to watch these humans these followers struggle with the words that jesus is saying in terms of 
what do you mean that your kingdom is not of this world, that you're going to be gone and, and rise from the dead? They don't, they can't understand. Is, is that another parable? There's such genuine confusion, genuine, just like, but wait, isn't it, isn't it like when David was king? No, it isn't. And we know that. I think that we were saying it after the movie. It's just, and Matt, Josh was hinting at it again. It's just been 2,000 something years. So we understand. But in that moment, in that time, I mean, because of the way the show was written, you sit there and you can feel how kind of embarrassed you're kind of like, oh my God, all right, all right, this is, this is crazy. Like we're going to get stoned. And then they do. <laughs> so it, it's the most important show. And getting, yeah, yeah. getting, getting stoned. That's something that the very gray area in today's life of, you know, just, of course we can connect it to the way that, you know, people get canceled or people get, you know, blocked out of society or being known or seen or and because of things that they do or say. But to be physically stoned, to be mm -hmm. thrown rocks at you, is something that's, I mean, I know for me has been hard to fathom reading the Bible. Um, and like hearing the word of, of, of God and just kind of hearing those those moments, it, it, it's hard to wrap your head around being stoned to death. And so to see that in episode six and thank God no one to death, but it's terrifying. It's terrifying to have all these people of anger, of rage, throwing these rocks at you. He's like That's, literally throwing rocks at you. It's, it's such a... It's... It's a physical means of telling someone, we hate you. We want you gone. We want you to return to the rocks and to die. It's intense. And at the same time, it, it shows that, well, because I remember when Jesus tells Judas to pay attention to my, to my sermon. And in that moment, it shows that following Jesus and following this path of life is, was never made to be easy. You are going to get hurt. You are going to be hated by people. Like, it's not, it's not the easy road. It's not going to be luxurious. What heaven is, it's a very different form of, you know, kingdom, kind of what we were talking about. It's very different than what the world sees as kingdom, royalty, luxury. So to put them in that position, it was, yeah, physically humbling. Um, even though it was very hard to watch and thank God nobody, you know, nobody died in that episode. <laughs> Um, in that moment. In that moment. Somebody did that. I was going to hear. I'm yeah. going to jump in right here. Yeah. Because um, I, just, I just remembered. That's one thing you just, you just reminded me that yeah. they're truly realizing, I think, starting to get and grasp the reality of what following Jesus is going to be like. Um, and are they really, you know, when James and John ask him to be at his left and right and the way he reacts, the way Jonathan and me portrayed that, of just like, you don't know what you're asking they're slowly starting to understand what it means to, you know, truly pick up that cross and follow him, like mm. what that means. You know, it's not, it's not always just the, the fluff and the, we're, we're getting a very raw and brutal look and glance at what that truly looks like. Well, that's what led to the death of Rayma too. Like, you know, she was there loyally, can I think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, following Jesus and doing, doing what he was calling them to do. And she was living her life purely, like she was such a pure and bright spirit. Um, so, but obviously, you know, it's, it's sometimes it, it, it will, unfortunately. I mean, you learn about saints now, like, yeah, they give up their life for Jesus. And that's what, honestly, Rayma probably felt too in the moment. I mean, obviously it was a shocker that she was killed. But one of the last things that she said to Thomas was to stay with him. Like, even to the death, she was still faithful to Jesus. She wasn't upset, like, why did he let this happen to me? She didn't have time for that. She was just so present in the moment. And she was almost at peace with whatever was to happen to her. Mm. And that was super just beautiful to see, despite the tragedy that it, that it was. Um, so, yeah, being a follower of Jesus, especially during then, was... Definitely not what they imagined, but something greater, even though it seems harder and scarier. Mm -hmm. It's something that's greater than they can even fathom, so. Yeah. Well, 
We can. I think it's time like to talk burrito. about. Oh, no. no what were we gonna say? We're gonna say we can make this like a burrito oh, to wrap whoa, it up. Whoa, whoa. But before we like wrap it up, we have to put some guac. Last, on little, this. last little. Yeah, let's out. put a little guac. I like this. This little, <laughs> little, little analogy you got going on, Josh. So here's the guac to our amazing burrito yes. of our. Uh, no, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's. We're gonna stop there. So we've been talking about the show and we were hinting at performances. So everyone, Demi Castro is a dear brother in Christ. He's an actor. He's a phenomenal actor at that he is in episode five he you'll see who he plays he plays a pharisee a, a kind of pharisee i don't know all the ranks yeah. but he he plays a pharisee who needs jesus to die listen i know this man demi is a man of god we actually met on a set playing disciples of christ he played peter and i played andrew his brother <laughs> so to see this moment on screen in the giant screen Fills me with joy, with hope, with excitement. I'm so, so proud of you, Demi. You're part of my favorite show of all time, one of the, mo the most important show of our time, as I said this earlier, and it is no accident you're there. I know God has amazing plans for you. We are so grateful for you. I know that must have been quite the journey. I cannot wait to talk to you about how you felt having to play this character. Um, I am praying that you continue to be a part of this this telling, this interpretation of, of of the chosen. What do, you, do you guys want to say something to Demi? I mean, it was a profound. You did an amazing job, Demi. Yeah, so of proud of you and congratulations. Emotions. So fantastic. I mean, I was happy to see you, and then you also were, who you yeah, play too. You played such like, a, a a character yeah. that was like, oh, oh. It announces oh the big elephant in the room. Yeah. Of like what we're all dreading is to come which is yeah. that they want jesus to be executed dynamic but healing. for like political reasons so it's just ah uh, you killed yeah. it it's it was so great to see you on on the big screen and mm -hmm. just to be part of that project what a what a huge blessing so yeah, yeah. we're we're i'm definitely praying for the best for you and hopefully you can continue on to do the yeah. show it's wonderful yeah my favorite part about your performance and in, in in that scene was how you know, you really, you knew what you wanted, you knew what you needed, you know, and how your plans, your plots, you need, you know, you need Jesus, you need Jesus gone, you need <laughs> Jesus gone. And so, um, I think I was telling my dad and to the whole family and everyone watching, I'm sure watching this video will agree that, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when you're playing a bad guy or someone that is technically an antagonist, if you will, mm -hmm. it's very easy to put that on, right? And put on the front of like, we're the bad person. And, mm -hmm. and, um, no, and the way that Demi you portrayed your character, it was just so, to the point where when your line came out, it was like saying that the sun was rising. Like, that's it wasn't, what you it wasn't it was so like you the, want the your sandwich with ham and cheese. Like it was just that matter of fact, that's what you needed. The music is what made us realize, yeah. oh, this is bad. Yeah. Because um, if you were to put it on mute, it's like, oh, this guy is having a, you know, he's Because at first you're rooting for Yusuf. You know, you want Yusuf to meet, to meet your character, to, you know, kind of get in and, <laughs> and kind of get a little bit more access. And then you realize very quickly that, um. You're like, oh. Yeah, you're like, oh, wow. Okay, so. I just love the way that so, um, so awesome. it was just very matter of fact, very, it makes it that much more haunting and also, um, I think just makes yeah, the character that much more grounded and believable. So Definitely. anyway, yes, we applaud you, Demi. Thank you again for your performance and yes. we can't wait to hear more about how it went and um, definitely anyone in the comments. Let us know how that scene affected you when um, Demi's character, I think you'll know which one we're talking about when he was talking with Shmuel and Yusuf yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, was it Yanni? Yanni was the third one, I believe. They were Maybe. talking and oh, they yes. found out that there was a plot to to kill Jesus. Oh, no, oh it was so <laughs> great. It was so great to see that on the screen. So, yes. yes, guys, thank you so much for listening to our thoughts on episodes four through six. We know that if, thank you for staying all the way through. If you have, I uh, definitely you. want to hear your thoughts below in the comments. Let us know what you thought of these episodes, how you yes. feel about The Chosen. Um, if you've seen it at all, maybe you've heard things and you're watching this as a sense of like trying to get an idea if, if you should watch it. We definitely recommend it. 100%. Um, but it's, it's, it's more than just, again, it, we, we truly mean it is it is a great show even mm -hmm. on just like a technical level yeah um in terms of we're quality, not even speaking like wise, biased because we are you know um because this is the faith i think it's us. i think it's a great way to to be introduced to the stories of jesus yeah that will ultimately lead you to um again the bible and to the actual word but overall we loved it and yeah and let us know uh who your favorite character is again meet us in the comments we'd love to have yeah. a conversation with all of you down characters. there and yeah, if you want. Give us all of it. Give us yeah. all of it. But yes, guys, with that, uh, stay tuned for episode 7 through 8. We're going to give our thoughts on that, too. We plan to. And we can't wait to, yeah, maybe do a live stream or something towards the end to yeah. talk about the whole show. But 
it's just so great. We're very um, excited for the whole cast, for the, the team behind this. Mm. Um, once again, I think Angel Studios is going to continue to kind of shake the industry and shake things up. I would not be surprised if you see a big show um, in the future do a similar thing when they do a theatrical run because it's just it's so great. And the fact that we have to wait two weeks kind of sucks. Um, it really <laughs> does. Cause but it it's worth it because then you get to it. see two episodes. It makes you want to go back. So, anywho, very exciting times. And yeah, guys, with that, go out there, spread your light. We'll see you guys in the next Magilive video. Have a Magilive day. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye.